any sort of idea of fluidity or multiplicity or polygamy or polyandry or whatever it is, which is sort of screech to a halt at the doors of a certain kind of British colonial mindset. For instance, that the division between the sexual and the sacred was an extremely porous one uh, for both what later called, came to be called Hinduism and for Islam, all kinds of bhakti traditions, male disciples would um, uh, effeminize themselves in order to worship Krishna or Shiva. In the court of Avad, the Nawabs would dress themselves up as women on the saints days of their peers in order to simulate women in labor and giving birth to uh, the sort of descendants of the, the peer. So all these were fairly mainstream activities. And by mainstream, I don't necessarily mean the norm, but I mean something that doesn't necessarily excite hatred, that doesn't necessarily excite criminalization by the law. Uh, this, this notion of living with indifference to difference, that seems to have been the case for thousands of years in the Indian subcontinent. Now that all changes with the coming of the British. They were shocked that the rulers of other should be men who would dress up as women. They were horrified that there were flourishing public traditions of hijras and khwajasarais and aravanis. And so they passed a whole bunch of laws. They passed the Criminal Tribes Act in 1871 to criminalize hijras. Um, they passed so-called uh, Hindu and Muslim personal laws in order to sort of tell them what they could or could not do sexually. They started a, a system of education in which Indians were gradually filled with revulsion for our own centuries old traditions. So colonialism was responsible for a lot, but I do want to add that they were very much acting in concert with certain traditions, especially the caste system and that kind of hierarchical structure in which a certain kind of puritanical ideology becomes ascendant was certainly something the British were.